All right, folks, Stuart here with the Drift Fox. Uh, as you know, we've been experiencing some cooling issues with the Mustang. Um, there's really no good reason for that. This build is not a crazy build. It's got nothing, you know, really crazy on it. And with uh, the cooling system that I have, it should be cooling fine. So uh, today we're going to look at a few things and see if we can figure out why we're having heating issues, uh, overheating issues, um, which is especially detrimental with the aluminum heads. So um, if you have aluminum heads, you, you can't afford to overheat your motor. Um, <clears throat> one thing I do know for a fact is that I did install the thermostat backwards. Uh, it was in the car backwards all along. I put it back the way that it was and now it's backwards. So after doing research, I know that I need to fix that. So we'll be going over detailed instructions on how to fix that or how to even install a thermostat correctly. Um, the other thing we're going to do is go ahead and flush the radiator, fill it back up with distilled water, which is um, distilled water and um, water wetter. And hopefully, uh, cross my fingers, hopefully that will solve my issues. Alright, so first off we're going to start by opening everything up just to get the radiator to drain properly. And we're going to go ahead and drain the radiator and open up the plug and drain into a drain pan. Make sure you use a drain pan so that you don't make free willy and flipper sick. Remember your environment, be environmentally conscious. And there goes our radiator fluid. And just to help keep things moving. We're going to pull off the upper radiator hose, make sure you loosen that. Most of these little uh, hose clamps are 8mm sockets. And this here is your thermostat housing, so we'll be removing this and the thermostat sits on the other side of this thing. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the hose that uh, leads to my thermostat line. I think that might be a heater hose, we'll just call it a heater hose. But I'm going to get in there, loosen that up. Alright, so we've got the heater hose loosened up, but we're going to go ahead and take off this heater hose as well. Just, uh, just to get that out the way. And the other thing that you're going to want to do is disconnect your distributor. Because that's going to be in your way as well. And you just don't want to be bumping it, you don't want to risk damaging it. So go ahead and pull that plug out of your way. So to remove the thermostat housing, you're going to go after that with the one half inch wrench. You may be able to squeeze in a uh, socket up top, but there's absolutely no way that you're going to be able to squeeze a socket in down here to get to that one. So just go ahead and grab yourself a wrench, take your time, and wind that thing out. Alright, both screws are ready to come out, and take note that the lower screw is a short screw and the upper screw is much longer so there's comparison the threads are the same but one is longer and now your thermostat housing is ready to come off and that is how you do not want to install your thermostat so make sure that your surfaces are clean. Now scrape them with a razor blade. Make sure you get all the residue off and uh, prep the surface before you replace this part. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the thermostat out. And just remember that when you put your thermostat back in, the spring is gonna point towards the block. So this end should be sticking out. You should be looking at the temperature before you put your thermostat back in and it goes into that hole, the spring faces the block. In addition to the thermostat being backwards, it actually came up a few times that the head gaskets could actually possibly have been put on backwards. Uh, this is a common mistake that people make uh, when they do head gaskets on a 3L2 motor. You can actually install them backwards. However, 
Uh, generally, a head gasket is squared off in the front of the motor and it's rounded towards the back of the motor. If you flip-flop that, you'll block the coolant ports in the back of the motor and then you're going to have overheating issues. Uh, I was very close to actually breaking down the top end of my motor just to check the head gaskets and put new ones on. But after a little bit of research, I was able to find out that you can actually tell from the outside whether or not your head gasket is correct because you'll actually see the corner stick out from underneath the head. So if you see the corner sticking out in the front, and you can actually see that on both sides, it's a little bit more difficult to see on the other side. But if you come to the front of your head and you see the corner sticking out, that's this piece right here, that's the head gasket, uh, you are okay. So we're ready to throw the thermostat back on there. I threw a little bit of RTV on there. Hopefully uh, we're not going to go above and beyond with the RTV sealant this time. So we're just going to make sure we got a nice seal against the radiator housing to prevent leakage. You really don't want to have extra of this stuff because it's going to go inside the coolant passages and then wherever it ends up is not going to be good. So you really want to be conservative with your use of RTV sealant. But we're still going to go ahead and throw a little bit on here before we put the gasket on just because we want it to seal well and we don't want any leaks. We're going to go ahead and drop the gasket on like such. Make sure your holes match up. And we're going to throw one more layer of RTV just to be sure and hopefully not get too crazy with it. And we're just going to spread it out just so that it makes a good seal all the way around. And really folks, this is definitely much more than what you would need to make a good seal. Okay, I'm not really sure about this temp gauge. It is a cheap one, so I'm not really surprised if it doesn't work. But I've got it temporarily wired up in the engine bay. We're gonna go ahead and add water and try to get the system to bleed and uh, run the car and see what happens. Hopefully everything stays cool. Also, don't forget to get yourself a bottle of this stuff. Uh, water wetter is pretty much proven to improve the performance of your radiator. And uh, remember that coolant is not actually the best coolant for your motor, even though it does have its own advantages. Uh, coolant is not the best thing to keep your motor cool. The absolute best combination is water water plus distilled water. All right, folks, so it's day two. Still messing with this cooling system. Um, I did actually take the Fox for a drive yesterday. It is doing much better with the uh, correct orientation of the thermostat that I showed you yesterday, which was 10 seconds ago for you. Um, however, there is still air in the system. If you squeeze the hose here, you can tell that there's not really much fluid in there. Uh, so basically what you've got to do in order to get the air out of your system is bleed it the best that you can if you don't have bleeders, drive the car, and then come back and add fluid to it, which I actually already did while it was cool, and the fluid is up here at the top. So um, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to use this special funnel, and I'll show you how to use it. And this funnel actually attaches to the... Um, radiator with these different adapters so what you want to do is find the correct adapter you want to install this directly into your uh, radiator filling area with the gasket facing down that way it's going to create a seal when you put the rest of the stuff together you want to find the correct radiator cap and this is the version for this radiator and you're going to fasten that like a radiator cap so we press that down like so, just like you would with your radiator cap. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is attach this second adapter to it. Uh, you're gonna grab your 45 degree elbow so that it sticks straight up in the air. And then you can attach your funnel. So now the funnel is more or less level. Um, at this point, we can go ahead and pull the plug out of the funnel and throw some liquid in there.
car is running, you want to watch here for bubbles to come up. You also want to work the hose at the same time to try to get the bubbles to come out. You'll actually feel the liquid start to go into the tube. Once the car is running, you're going to have to let it warm up and wait for the thermostat to open before you start to see anything happen up here. Uh, once it does, you should see some bubbles coming up, and then you can work the tube a little bit to try and get the liquid to flow in between. Now there's no more bubbles rising, we're going to go ahead and shut the motor off and uh, cap up the radiator. So we've been doing some driving and the temperature is staying pretty consistent. Uh, we've gotten it to do a few fluctuations. I left the fans off and let it get up above 200 degrees and when I kick the fans on it does eventually get back down so I'm not 100% comfortable with how it's cooling right now. Uh, it's about 65, 70 degrees tonight so we'll see how it performs later on uh, once it gets up to like 80 and 90 degrees. So on that bombshell, it's time to end our show. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.